name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to the Gospel Ministry Outlook. I'm Pastor Rodney Johnson from the Fountain of Living Outreach Ministries, <clears throat> where we located 3800 Boy Rock Road, South Side, Richard, Virginia, where the Honorable Bishop Lawrence Levi Taylor and the Honorable Elders, our co pastor Stephanie Taylor, is the pastor of the church. Our husband and wife team is winning souls for Christ Jesus. Oh, it's not the deliverance we're having a good time at the church. It's a high time. New souls are coming in. Every time you turn around, you see somebody new. And every you turn around, somebody is shouting and dancing and praising God, giving God all the glory, giving God all the honor, giving God all the wisdom, because he do glory, honor, and wisdom and power. It belongs to him. I just thank God for Christ Jesus. I just thank God for this season, because we know Jesus is the reason for the season. In this December, this Thanksgiving, in December time, this Christmas time, um, Jesus is the reason for the season. I just thank God. I'm Pastor Rodney Johnson, the outreach pastor of the Films of Delivering Outreach Ministries. Once again, you're, you, 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 you're in for a treat. We have a great program for you. I'm telling you, we got honorable guests here. Uh, 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 oh, my God, we got honorable guests. We all know the honorable brother Robert West, but we got the honorable the Honorable, my friend indeed, Pastor Gwen Rodriguez is with us today. And I'm yeah. telling you, oh, my God, she going to talk a little bit about her ministry and, for the, and what the Lord is doing for her. And I'm telling you, we got a good show for you today. We want you to call in with your Christian views. Call in. Call in. You know, if something on your mind, call in. We, and we would be glad to try to answer what you have to say to your questions the best we can, but in spirit and in truth. Because we uplifting Jesus. Oh, I'm telling you, we uplifting Jesus. Yes. Oh, yes, we are. We uplifting Jesus. We yes. uplifting Christ Jesus, the reason for the season. Oh, I'm telling you, if you ever want to experience with God, come to Jesus. If you ever want to know who he is, try him out. Set him into your heart as Lord and Savior. But right now, hallelujah, we got the honorable Pastor Gwen Rodriguez <laughs> with us, the co-host, the Honorable Brother Robert West is with us once, us once again. And I'm telling you, oh my God, Pastor Gwen Rodriguez, won't you just please just, just put yourself out there. The people, some people know you, and I know you're well known in the city of Richmond. Yeah. So just, just. Well, I just want to say hello to everybody. I'm Pastor Gwen Rodriguez. For those who don't know who I am, I'm the pastor of Jubilee Holistic Life Ministries, and we're an outreach ministry on the north side of Richmond, Virginia, off of Brook Road. Um, the address is 4100-C Brook Road, and we do a lot of outreach in, in the north side area, and uh, we, we actually have, I don't know if you want me to go into some of the things that we're doing, if I got a minute to do that um, <laughs> um, we just have a lot of programs that we're getting off um, the ground we have a program that I'm particularly proud of called the ESTA initiative which is a mentorship program for young girls from the ages of 9 through about 16 years old mm -hmm. and it's the, the program is actually based off of the story of Esther mm -hmm. and how Esther was a, a orphan and how she was basically raised by her cousin some say he was her uncle but they, it was he was her cousin and he he raised her he adopted her and um she was selected to uh go before the king and there was a process there was a preparation process that had to go forth before she could actually have audience with the king and so that's where the theme of the Esther initiative it comes in we basically because we know Esther had to be prepared and she went through a whole training process even in in terms of hygiene and and even the way she spoke and things of that nature so that's what we're doing with the young girls because we find that our young people People, they're so focused on TV and mm -hmm. and yes. um, we yeah. actually parents really don't have the time either because we're so busy we're not developing our children you if I don't know if anybody noticed but a lot of times you see the young girls looking like boys and the boys looking like girls and so this is where the Esther initiative program comes in because we're trying to mentor the young girls and trying to teach them how to be young ladies and be respectable how to dress respect respectably how to speak actually 
um, at the end of the month. I like to share that with everybody out in TV land. We're going to be having a, a tea party, a holiday tea party for the young girls wow. where we're going to take them to um, the, the um, Hilton Hotel downtown and we're going to just teach them etiquette and, and it'll be a time for us to have the opportunity to dress up because that's something else we don't get a chance to do. We don't get a chance to dress up anymore. People are so out of, you know, dressing up. We don't even dress up for church anymore. Right, right. And so mm -hmm. we teach it. Uh, we, we're basically just teaching the young girls. We also, every Saturday, we teach them praise dance. And we also invite others. So if there's anybody who would like to get in contact with me who's out in TV land, uh, Comcast land, mm -hmm. um, you can call me at 804-658-4118 because we, we're planning on having a career day mm -hmm. where we um, can even explore some career opportunities and, and just prepare our young people and our young women in particular particular and, and and hopefully in the future I also would like to have a program called the Daniel Initiative for the young boys wow. so we're looking for volunteers and brothers to come in to help support our efforts right you talking about a young woman that's on the road for Jesus Christ this is what I'm talking about outreach and reaching the next generation uh, the Bible say one generation passes away the others remain uh, one generation passes away Another cometh, but the earth remains the forever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me say that again. <laughs> I'm laughing because this is the reason why I'm laughing today, though. Know. Uh, it's one generation passed away, another cometh, but the earth remains forever. we reaching out to this next generation. I'll tell you, last week's show, we were talking about um, yeah, next generation. It, it's amazing what you're doing. I, I love it. We need more... Um, there's other churches that are doing their way of reaching the young people. And, and we, I praise every pastor that is out there reaching the young people. I, I, I just love it. I love it. I love it. Um, um, I, that's my prayer for, my, for me to your ministry, that God would just have um, the youth just flood in. Amen. And it would be a blessing into your ministry. Uh, because you, as you know, the ministry out of um, Fountain is full of youth. It's mm -hmm. got to, there's so many youth that's coming in, young people that's coming in. Of, um, of all ages and special, uh, um, a, a lot of young men and women just in their twenties and thirties and stuff, and um, it, it's something about that next generation that, yes, that we yes, have to reach. Yes. And I, I, I'm really uh, mad at about you. Always mad at about you because you 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 you're not only your people's person. I, I noticed that um, you really love children and you love the young people. I do. So that's that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And you ought to be under a pastor that love um, the young people. <laughs> yeah. I always say other pastors. That's um, uh, I praise my pastor all the time. My pastors, mm -hmm. those, I praise them all the time because they reaches them generation. They they just minister to the generation. There any pastor out there that minister to that next generation? Yeah. So we they need to be saved. Yeah. And like you said, pastor, there are um, young um, girls. You see a lot of this day and time. Young ladies that um, they just confuse and mad the stage that they go through, right? And when they see, um, not all of them been hurt um, by a boyfriend or or a, 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 a husband. Um, some are just curious of the agenda, you know. Right. This, you know, they're curious, so they reaches out to the wrong, um, to the opposite sex. They reach out to the same sex, excuse me, to the same sex. And young men do the same thing. But um, I'm glad as a pastor like you, there's a young in the city of Richmond that's, that's coming up that God is raising up to reach that generation. Amen. Mm -hmm. And you know, the, the, the whole thing is, I believe that this is really the, the direction of the church. We've always had the, the mission to do outreach. Christ always commanded us to go into the highways and the byways. But I think that in this season, God is bringing us to a point where we really have to begin to outreach. We got to go outside of the four walls of the church. We can no longer be bound by the four walls and we have to we have to be compelled to go out and compel them to come you know mm -hmm. and the greatest way is to, to to reach out to the youth and it's just so much confusion in, in our generation um, because basically young people are raising themselves they're, they're basically watching TV and if they're not watching TV then they're on the Xbox and the PlayStations and mm -hmm. they um, and they they also you know they they're not having the interaction anymore 
the, 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 the interaction with um, other adults. And so it's important for the church to stand up in, in this season and to, to begin to do what we've been called to do, what we've been commissioned by Christ to do, mm -hmm. is to go out and, 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 and bring the people in and compel them. And, and Christ always met the needs of the people, which is what, what we try to do at, at Jubilee. So we, we, we focus mostly on our Outreach. Actually, over the summer, we did a summer feeding program for children from the ages of zero to 18. Mm -hmm. And if they didn't have breakfast or lunch, they came by for breakfast and lunch. And so, you know, I just, I'm just thankful because God is opening up doors for us. But we want to be in place to do things for the community because that's the assignment of, of the church. That's right. That's right. 915-5202. 915-5202, please call in um, with your views. If you'd like to put in input, please call. But uh, this is what I would like to ask you. Uh, when, did, when, when did that burden for that next generation come upon you? Well, you know, the thing is, is that I have children myself. Mm -hmm. So uh, being a mother... Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I've seen, I've had, actually my children's, the ages range from 13 to 26. So I have seen, and particularly my sons, because I've, I have three boys, and, and that's a whole nother subject in itself. Mm -hmm. But I've mm -hmm. seen their struggles as even as young black men, um, different things that they, that, that they have had to endure. And so uh, um, as much as, you know, mm -hmm. I, I love people. Oh, hey, Excuse me. Mm -hmm. How you doing? Doing fine. How you doing? Uh, <laughs> she got a she got a, a drawing uh, power for for young people, and that, that's what mm -hmm. uh, Paul said. I become all things to all men, mm -hmm. and I think sometimes as we get old, we forget we were. I mean, I'm 61. I'm not an old man, but I'm on my way. But I remember when I had super fly clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I was real militant. Mm -hmm. You know, I was in. You know, I liked the Panthers and you know that type thing. I came up doing. I graduated from high school in '69. Uh huh. And so, what I try to do when I preach, I try to relate not just to older people but young people because they got a language of their own. Amen. And, yes, you, they and do. you need to know that. See, yes. something powerful right there. Yes. Mm -hmm. and you, you understand what I'm saying? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And I'm glad that you bring that up because mm -hmm. um, even that's one of the themes or missions of the Jubilee, actually, is to be able to reach the, the young people. And I, I like to say that I'm still young at heart, even though I'm 49, but I still, <laughs> you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm still young at heart. Yeah, yeah. And one do, you, of do you, do you? Do you have a church? Yeah, yes, it's um Where you at? I'm on the north side off of Brook Road. Uh-huh. What's the name of it? I'm going to try to come and see what you're doing. Amen. It's Same. Jubilee Holistic Life Ministries. What, uh, what, what's the church number? It's 4100-C Brook Road. 41 4100-C Brook Road. Okay. Okay, and we also have a website. It's called uh, Jubilee Jubilee Center. Jubilee. Okay. Excuse me. I'm, I'll, let me say it correctly. It's www.jubilee-center.com, okay. and you can go to our website and see some of the other things that that we're involved with. And one of the things, especially when you mentioned the the language, one of the things the theme of of um, the last 100 days we, we the past um, 100 days of the year or the last 100 days of the years 
of the of this year we've been saying that we're grinding for Jesus you know and we really try to use the lingo of the young people because in in the world the young kids they'll talk about oh I'm grinding and I'm doing this and I'm grinding and I'm going out to the club and I'm well, I'm grinding on the job and I'm grinding for this and I'm grinding for that but how come we can't grind for Christ you know now's the time for I said the last 100 years I mean 100 days of this year we are going to grind for you Christ I'm so glad that the Lord is using you. You have broke some yokes Amen. from the traditional church because some of these traditional fo folks, when you say grind, they will get turned over. I know it. Yeah. I know it, but, that but that's turned, all right. But I understand. I right. Understand. That's all right that, because we're going to go hard. It's time. That's right. We have going hard yeah, for that, everything that, else. I'm, I'm going to find you over there. Amen. I, I just, I just I like what y'all doing, man. Cause that's what. <laughs> Cause I, I I I'm really tired of t t preaching to tr t traditional people. Yes. Yeah. They don't they don't want to they don't want to do nothing. Yeah. Are you a preacher? Yeah, I've been in ministry thirty nine years. Amen. Oh, okay. Well, praise the Lord. All right. <laughs> but, but this is what I, I I tell people this. Benjamin May said this. He said, "I'm tired of sailing my ship." in the harbor bar. I want to go out in the deep mm. where the sharks and the porpoises are. And if I by chance go down, I can at least say I didn't drown in shallow water. Most churches want to just get, want to get some minerals around the neighborhood. Mm. But they don't want to go out where that young lady is getting the crack addicts. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that's what we do. Yeah. And that's, that's what y'all doing, man. That's the type of ministry we have. Amen. Yeah, we reach like everybody. That. Okay. Mm -hmm. Amen. All Thanks right. for God bless you. Mm -hmm. Yes, but, indeed. But I like what he said about the language. Mm -hmm. You got to know the language. The language is very important. The language of the, that's right. The language of the youth today is different from the language of what we had yesterday. Mm hmm it's the, the language. You got to know the language. You yeah. got to. Well, you know language. what was interesting because even I had did some research on the per, the man who uh, did the translation on the Message Bible, and that mm -hmm. was one of the things that he said why he did this the translation of the Message Bible because the Message Bible is in just modern day language. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. he and in fact he even eliminated the the verses and the chapter numbers because he he believes that because you know we have dissected the scriptures so much mm -hmm. that it. Has Mm -hmm. taken away from the meaning but one of the things that he said when he translated the message Bible was he said that he always believed that the Bible was meant to be translated in the language the current language of the culture right and mm -hmm. so that's something that we have kind of stepped away from um, and it's, I mean I love the King James version of the Bible but sometimes that turns people off because pe we don't speak like that anymore mm -hmm. and so sometimes people because of the lingo they mm -hmm. they we can't we're not connecting with people and so i do believe that it's important that we a, we're able to explain to people that's what it means to meet somebody where they're at mm -hmm. you know is meeting them where they're at means that i i understand your lingo your language i can relate to you you know and that's what the testimony is anyway that's right that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Brother Robert, what's your input on uh, the youth today? Common spoken language. Like you said, you got to be where the people are, you know. Like here in America, we have um, different sects that speak English, different sects that may speak another foreign language. But, I, I, you know, I was brought up on the King James Version of the mm -hmm. Bible. Mm -hmm. And you, like you said, we, some of the part of the King James Version we don't speak like that, but we have new scholars that have changed the way the word has been brought out. Mm -hmm. Like thou, how art thou, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I call it stuff because it took a while for me to comprehend it as I was a younger, younger man in the word of Christ. Mm -hmm. But now that times have changed, the scriptures in the King James Bible are very legible and easy mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. understand. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, they might spell certain words different because you know the English language is full of words that are uh, sound the same but are spelled different, different. and mean different. Mm -hmm. So um, when it was translated over from ancient Arabic or Hebrew into the English language, you know we are, the scholars back then they made mistakes 
you know. So we can't blame much of, you know, we can't blame the scholars no. from then. Mm -hmm. But see, what I, my, my, my goal now is to, to really get into the New Testament. The mm -hmm. New Testament, I mean, the old law is over. Christ has already done what he had to do for us. And there's nothing wrong with knowing the Old Testament. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. I don't mean it like that. But it's the New Testament is what's happening now. Christ has already died. He spilled his blood. And it's time for us to move on and move forward into the new world. Mm -hmm. And the New Testament is very important today for us to be able to comprehend. And we need leaders that are capable of getting the word to us in the five-fold ministry type. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's good to have. I mean, I enjoy the fivefold ministry. Well, basically, the, the the church, every church should be set up on fivefold ministry. Yeah. The apostolic faith um, um, is the fivefold ministry. Every church should be set up on it. Um, basically, when you don't have, when what every pastor should allow God to use them in their gifts of the yeah. fivefold ministry. Somewhere in your church, yeah, it, you might be dominant in. Some people um, in the teaching, some might be dominant in the prophesying, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But you need somewhere in the line, because of your members that come in and you have to minister, every pastor should be, at any time, be able to be used by the Holy Spirit in the fivefold ministry. Mm -hmm. and, and it ought to be operating in the church, because it's that fivefold ministry. Your, your church is not gonna, your, your church is not gonna have much spirit if you don't allow this Holy Spirit to have its way and use you in the fivefold mm -hmm. ministry. Mm -hmm. You got to have it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Yes. But this is the season. <laughs> Christ, I mean, isn't it, isn't it amazing how, you know, we, we're supposed to be celebrating the birth of Christ and all this commercialism that's out here, you know. They mm -hmm. don't even give it a day or so past Thanksgiving and they call it what? Black Thursday or Black Friday and stuff like that. They, <laughs> they just want to spend money. And then you know it, it's all about the birth of Christ. Mm -hmm. It's not about somebody flying around on a sled. Now, don't get me wrong. Now, we, you know I grew up believing in Santa Claus too, but you know we we need to stop lying to our children, confusing them, telling them that somebody's flying around with reindeers mm -hmm. and making that trip over over <laughs> the whole night long they can't see from out Christ. of the North Pole. They can't see the truth without seeing all the, the fables, you know. Yeah, all I mean, the, and that's not fair you know. to the child. Mm -mm. I mean, that's not fair to the child at all because it's about Christ. It's about the birth of Christ. It's about Christ dying, and then and later on in Christ's life, he died for our sins. Mm-hmm. You know, don't, you know, don't, don't get it confused. That's commercialism. I mean, some people will say, yeah, well, you had a Christmas. You this, you that, yes. But not yes. all the time, because I'll be honest. I understand to tell you, that. To tell you the truth, um, even like, like now, it, 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 it's not about me getting anything. I might don't get anything. It don't bother me because I know who I serve. That's right. You know, Christ they gave me the gift of the Holy Spirit. And long like I hold it, that's that's good. That's good enough for me. Mm -hmm. And I, you don't, um, I know you want to bless your children, and I say, yes. Yes, please bless your children, but don't don't kill yourself trying to bless them because yeah. they blessed all year, and, that's and right. you're forgetting the whole reason for the season. So nine um, one five five yeah. two one two. They might don't get yes nine one five five two zero two. Call with your um, is it two one two or two zero two five two zero two? And I'm I'm telling you. Don't don't kill yourself out there. <laughs> don't kill yourself over Christmas and these holidays, because there's another Christmas that'll come up next year. You, the Lord will bless you better. But Jesus is the reason for the season. Sometimes uh, we as human beings we so used to getting stuff and then when we don't get it. Yeah. We panic. And a lot of people you know. commit suicide and all that during this time of the year. I remember my mom told me it's, it may be funny to some people, but she told me Christmas was right around the corner. You better stop backing up. I ran up there and looked around the corner and came back and said, Mom, you know, <laughs> you know, you know, you know, Mama, I laughed so hard at me. And that's when I finally realized, there ain't no Santa Claus. 
I think I was well, about I, eight, seven or eight years old. I do been. have two comments that I like to make. Um, the first one mm -hmm. being um, dealing with the whole Thanksgiving and the Black Friday thing. And I just find that it's just a, almost an oxymoron that one day we're, we're being thankful and mm -hmm. we're celebrating or being thankful for what we have and mm -hmm. thanking God for, for what we have. And then the very next day, we're out there killing each other, <laughs> trying to get stuff. The devil is a lie. <laughs> it, it just doesn't make sense. It just doesn't fit. He's yeah, one well, else one minute saying. we're being thankful no. and then the next minute we in the mall with tasers. <laughs> no, not too <laughs> long after you eat. Right. Yeah. Not too long after dinner other. and watching a good game. Yeah. <laughs> 12 o'clock midnight you lined up and you ready to rush in and run somebody over for to get something. But see yeah. the whole thing <laughs> is what we can't forget about is that the, the, the enemy does want to get in it and he always wants to make a mockery out of God and yes I mean we can go into a whole lot of things mm -hmm. because you know that that I mean, this subject opens up a lot of issues because some people don't want to celebrate Thanksgiving because of what they said mm -hmm. that happened to the Native American Indians. So you got people who don't want to celebrate Thanksgiving, and then you got people who don't want to celebrate Christmas, Christmas. because they're saying they're that the of you know, July, and all this uh, other stuff. But at the end of the day, um, I my personal opinion is that um, you know sometimes man does need to have set times to identify with and, and to set aside for God and there are spiritual holy days that are mentioned in the Bible and I don't think that there's anything wrong with even having a man-made holy day as long as we as you said keep Jesus as the reason in, in, right. in, in this season mm -hmm. and um, even as, as being a parent um, uh, and, and a mother I've always one of the main things that I do as a mother is I just believe in speaking truth to my kids yes. and it's mm -hmm. not that I didn't do Santa Claus and all yeah. of that kind of stuff with them because that's just a part of childhood mm -hmm. but I've always told them what the truth is right. I've always right. told them what the mm -hmm. truth is and and I think that that that's the key and 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 also reminding them that that we're doing it to to commemorate the birth of Christ and yes. that, and and his life that's what we're celebrating his life and you know because people get really tied up in and really I think sometimes we overthink it because people get really tied up in oh well you don't want a tree because the tree is this and that and the other and, and people just I think we just sometimes get a little carried away with everything yes. but we just ha I do believe that as um, Christians we do just have to remember why we're doing it and right. keeping mm -hmm. Christ in the forefront. Right. It just it's just so sad when you see people Jesus is the reason. get depressed out it that allow the enemy to, to burden them down with the worldly things just for one day. You know. Uh just and be thankful. Just be thankful for being look, you know, just Same be matters. thankful for being alive. Just be thankful for being alive. I mean, to wake up on Christmas morning and say, Thank you, Jesus. And you can either call a friend and say Merry with something that Merry Christmas Day. I want you to say that now. Or something. Happy I mean, holidays. Yeah, happy holidays. Or what you say 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 I love you, Jesus. Right. The first thing when you wake up on Christmas morning, you know, let me you. tell you what I miss on Christmas. I miss this. My children, they all grown and they they got their own, they grown now. But I miss when they was when we were small. When they were small, the younger years, there were little bitty things. And I was able to work and get them a little Christmas, but to wake up on Christmas morning before they open the toy, you know, cause they, I know they were half woke all night. Right. Can't wait to get up. <laughs> right. yeah, I, I did it. But to grab their hands as a family and pray and mm -hmm. thank God, you know. As a family. Yeah, letting them know it was Jesus. Not us, it was Jesus. It's the reason for the season. It's the Lord. Thanking the Lord because he allowed us to have another Christmas that allowed them. A lot of a, a lot of families get away from that these days, mm -hmm. you know. So I I I really enjoy that when was coming up when the kids are so small and just to grab them little hands. Come on, everybody, just have a little circle and pray with each family. It, yeah. I miss them days. Everything's spread <laughs> out. Yeah. They don't yeah. even come to the table to eat anymore. Mm -hmm. Right. They got these little stands and 
they sitting down there eating at a little stand looking at TV. And mm -hmm. It's not like it used to be. Everybody used to sit down at the same time for breakfast and for dinner. And oh, that's yeah. where conversation, Yeah. If how was school that day, you know, do you have any homework? That's when you could communicate with one another. But let me share something with you on, on that. Don't you know eating at the table as a family keeps the family strengthened? Yes, yes. It, does. yes it does. A lot of family, this day and time, with, um, the generation that we're living in now, this day and time, families don't eat together at the yes, table. Yes, no that's more. what I was trying right. to say. They grab a pork chop sandwich. Go on mama, the cook, mama cooked all that food. <laughs> And some pops, but most of your mom cook all that food. They want to go outside with a friend, go outside with a girlfriend, or they go play some more basketball, do the little little thing. They grab a little pork chop. Now you ain't eat your greens or anything. Then set the table. Oh, you want to come on, man? You bring company over. No, you should have company, not to come over. That you eat mm -hmm. with the family. You go in the room playing the game. But parents don't say that no more. Nope. They don't. Well, but but that's because parents are busy working. Two um, or three jobs. Exactly. I, oh. I have I know someone right now that leaves for work at four thirty in the morning and don't get back until about mm -hmm. eleven or twelve o'clock at night working ahead, double call. shifts. Good afternoon. It's a beautiful show. Good afternoon. Yes, I'm enjoying all three of you uh, and bless you. Uh, the love. See that's that's what we had. So many houses. We had to go to because everybody had hands and turkeys and children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. And people uh, didn't have problems with cars. Those were the homeless people. You know what I mean? Yes. And you go from one place to another, and it was joy. Yes. It was joy. And if somebody had too much eggnog or rum, <laughs> they just sit in the chair, and you take the car keys out your pocket and let them uh, take a nap. And then wake up and feed them again. Then mm -hmm. see, and we still go back to that word I keep telling y'all. Mm -hmm. And it's love. Yes, yes, Lord. And see, when well, you've taken that out, you've taken everything, my darling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, it, it, it's too late. Well, that's what we Christ said. It. He said the greatest thing is love. And so and we. So mm -hmm. It's gone. Mm -hmm. It is. It's gone. And I bless you. I just had to call you on that. It's still about the love. That's mm. right. Mm -hmm. That's People right. get mad if you didn't come. Come over here and get something to Smithy and Ham. And mm. wrap up something to take home. You understand? Mm -hmm. Nobody's at home anymore. They're at McDonald's or the Golden. Or they're out of town at the races. Or the love. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what's wrong with your children. It's no love. I bless all three of you Thank and happy you. holiday. Happy holiday. Thank happy you. holiday. Yes, Merry Christmas. Yes, yes. <laughs> Indeed. I agree with the sister. And but you know the thing is we don't want to just be here to talk about it. We want to be about it. And that's why we're on the the television show tonight. Is so that we can bring attention to it and mm -hmm. remind people, you know, of the things of, of this word that's in this Bible. Mm -hmm. Because that's the thing that Christ talked about was the love and that is the greatest thing and mm -hmm. you know and love never fails and we have to bring it back we have to call it forth we have to speak it over our community we have to speak it over our children we can't accept it we can't allow the enemy to win you know mm -hmm. he, we we win we will always win because we're believers and we got to because of our presence in Richmond Virginia we're going to call the love back into Richmond mm. we're calling it back into the community there we go. We're, we're bringing it we have to speak it. We, we're representatives. We're joint mm -hmm. rulers and co-heirs with Christ. And, right. and we have to be the representative of love. Mm -hmm. We have to. We just can't talk about it. We got to be about it. You mm -hmm. know, we got to be about it. We have to stop talking about it. I'm tired of talking about it because everybody mm -hmm. talks about it. But nobody is being about it. And it's time mm -hmm. for us to mm -hmm. be about it. That's right. That's right. And that's why we, like you say, that's why we own the air. That's why we do the, the TV shows. We can do a TV show of anything. Because we, we, uh, we're young-minded, creative. We, there's a lot of things we can do a TV show about. But there's something about the, the take what God gave us, that love that he put in us, and to share it to, into the communities. 
it's to bring a community, to unite a community, to keep something going, yes, to, yes. To, to, to stand on the wall, to cry loud, to spare not. Hallelujah. Come on. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, I yes. tell you, that, that love that you, we can just able to put out there, mm, it, that means a whole lot. It means a whole lot to a, a boy. It means a whole lot to a girl. It means a whole lot to the mother that's raising the children by herself. It means a lot to a husband that's in, bound in the jail. It means a lot. Go ahead, Carla. Yeah, I'm back again. I want to state something here. Yes. When Jesus was born, Herod tried to kill him. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Now, watch this. There's a Herod after our kids crack. <laughs> Cocaine. <laughs> drive by. And you know what they did? Mm -hmm. They hid Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, and see, mm -hmm. see, when I came up, my mama hid me in prayer. She hit me in Sunday school. Mm, yes, amen. She hit me on a basketball court. I know, that's right. She hit me somewhere where I was doing something constructive. Now, each generation has to face a Herod. Mm -hmm. Herod may be, may be stand your ground, but you got to hide your child so when he grows up, he can bring about liberation in the community. I'm 62 because somebody hit me. Mm. Think about that. Mm. <laughs> okay, God bless you, brother. God bless you. I, 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 yeah, I like that. Yeah. That was how it was. Yeah. Yes. How yes. powerful. <laughs> yeah. There's a Herod after our kids. Mm. Oh. That's good. That's that's good. Yes, it that's is. That's good. Yes, it, it is. It, 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 that's 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 that's. Oh my God. Because you know, it's just so mm. much that's going on within our community, and and sometimes um, we don't like to talk about certain things. We kind of sugarcoat things, and you know, um, I and I'm gonna open up a can of worms here. But I, what I always like to tell people is, you know, I love everybody. I love black people, white people, blue people, <laughs> purple people, pink people. Spanish, whatever, but guess what? God made me a black woman. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He created me as a black woman. And as living a, the life of a black woman, mm -hmm. there's certain issues as a black woman that mm -hmm. I have to deal with. As mm -hmm. a black mother of three black boys mm -hmm. and a young 13-year-old black child. Mm -hmm. So as a black woman, there has to be some issues that I got to stand up for. And whatever they stand up for in Lithuania, well, God bless you. You fight your cause in Lithuania because in Richmond, Virginia, in the United States, there's just issues that I have to be concerned about as a black woman. Mm -hmm. And it's not to take anything from anybody else. And I, you know, and I do believe in diversity, don't get me wrong, but there's just certain things that are subject to our community that I believe that even as the black church, we have to deal with. And we have to stop shoving this stuff under the carpet and acting like it doesn't exist. And we have to stop putting, being like an ostrich and putting our head in the sand and act like it don't exist, you know, because we, we're having all these meetings and having all these church, church services, but then we still have our young boys who can't walk the street in Florida getting killed. We have, the, we have a young lady who they just found her body today oh, yeah. in Lynchburg, Virginia. We, you know, you know, our children can't even walk home from school or go come home from college or whatever it is. You know, as a black woman, I have to be worried that if my son walks up the street to the barbershop, whether or not he's going to make it home or not. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm just trying to put that out there so that, that we have to wake up. We have to wake up. We have to wake up. And, and, and I believe in diversity, and I believe that God created us all, but there are certain issues that right now in this season in, of, 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 of humanity in the United States, there's still some issues. You know, they want to talk about, oh, well, you got a black president, Barack Obama, you know, that like we made it, we, we done made it now because we got a black president. No, we did it all. <laughs> because the same issues don't go yeah, on. But there's still mm -hmm. some issues. We, we mm -hmm. may not have chains literally on us, but spiritually we still have chains. Mm -hmm. 
we still have chains, mental chains, and still we still have yokes. Uh, there was a, a Black Enterprise article that came out that said that in 2015, the Black community will be um, spending $1.4 trillion. I believe that. $1.4 trillion. But the question is, is where are we spending this money? Is this money being recirculated back into our schools and in our communities, or, or what, what are we putting it in? Is are we, you know, because I remember there was a report even a couple of years ago that came out that said that black people were the most consumers in terms of going to the movies and buying cars and things of that nature. But what are we doing with our money? We have to be educated about spending the money where we live. <laughs> but here's the thing about that. Um, I'm back to um, uh, the sister that called, my little mm -hmm. sister that called. Um, back to love. Mm -hmm. Everybody, and I'm not, I don't want to, I want to, I'm not trying to put this out here wrong mm -hmm. about, about love. But when you so into the corner stores mm. that were once long time ago owned by the black man, um, a black entrepreneur, you know, some black women, but black entrepreneurs, put it that way. Um, we put our money into um, other cultures that's right in our neighborhood. Follow, follow me? But we don't take time enough to, you, you take, you got 40,000 people in a, in a community or say 10,000 tops, 5,000. Okay, you got each corner, you got five stores in your community, just around the community. All of them is run by another culture. They make their money off of us, the black man, the black woman. Okay. A long time ago, when it was all run, we had our own stores in our own community. That was the that's love. I'm on another level of love. I'm mm -hmm. showing, showing you something because we sold back into us. But this this day and time is it, something about trusting one another. Of not, it's not enough love towards our brothers and sisters. To bring that money back into you, you follow me. I'm just, just, just trying to get you to mm -hmm. see what I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. um, what you said, everything you said, is 100% correct. I agree with it 100%. What I'm saying within that is that we do things to ourselves. Right. Right. <laughs> but, but the thing is, the whole thing, what we have to realize, and okay, and I'm going to step out there. Y'all might not have me back on the show after, uh, after no, this, but it had, that, had, that has been bred into our community, you right, know, well, that we don't right. love each other. And so we have to begin to love each other again, you know, and we got to begin to support each other and understand see we're we are miseducated people because we don't understand the power of the dollar and the power of spending it within our community. There are actual studies that show how in the Italian community and the Jewish community and even in the Hispanic community the dollar will flip about twelve times I believe in the Jewish community before it <laughs> actually leaves their community whereas within the black community it will only bounce you know maybe four or five six times if that much and then go out go directly out of the community so the thing is who is educating us who is educating our our people and like I said you know this is not to be like pro-black and you know to, to dispel diversity because I believe right. in diversity but I also believe in self-preservation and I also believe that because I live in a black neighborhood I live in a black community, so I need to be able to support my own community. As, a, as an entrepreneur, I am by trade, I'm a hairdresser. So as an entrepreneur, I see it every day. You know, people, with the, even dealing with 
clients or people who come in who I have dealt with in the past, you, they, they don't respect, we don't respect each other. And we have to restore that back to the community. Right, and, 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 and restoring back to the community, we back to our youth. Right. You're right. Back to that next generation. Right. It should be all about this, this next generation now to grab them, to cultivate them, right. to, to make them entrepreneurs, to make them, to show that love, right. that love, and right. put that love of Christ that God given to us mm -hmm. into them and to show them how to um, um, be more successful, that you don't have to have that pants down. They pull your right. pants up and become an entrepreneur. Right. Pull your pants up, get that education, mm -hmm. that education, get it. Not only show them how to be an entrepreneur, show them how to be educated with that entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you, if we, if we can do that, even in, in, in our churches, if we can just take the youth and, and store that in there. I know we give them a, a lot of, um, we give them Bible that's good. You got to have it. Right. You got to have that word, foundation. Uh, but it go further, just like salvation. Once you go get into the door, you don't stop at the door. Mm -hmm. You got to keep on going. You got to get sanctified. <laughs> you got to become, you know, the Holy Ghost filled. And it's the same it, with, in, in grooming them in that way, we also have to groom in the natural to be men and women of status. We groom them into men and women of status. Mm -hmm. oh. Well, I, I have a question too, but go ahead and answer. Okay. Uh -huh. so, mm -hmm. Go ahead, Carl. Can I have a question? Um, how does that mean? Do we not just get get the church to back our young people in their endeavors and try to get them to go the right way? When honestly, some churches are leaving the city area and venturing off into the county area. Mm -hmm. So how do you do that? I understand because you have because you have pastors. And it's not all pastors. Well, I just put it like this. Most of them go to the county area because they're looking for status and a certain amount of people and a certain amount of people bring in um, money. Certain people status, they, you know, they, you know, everybody like a doctor, a lawyer, you know, a person with money in that church. Um, but a lot of people move to the counties because they're trying to, they, they want to be one way, but still dealing with the city, so they're dealing with the outreach at. You know what I'm saying? That that right, you know right. to, you know they don't want to be in, in the sort of well. The, the first the first thing we have to realize is that the church is not the building, and we have to realize that the church is the people, and that means the church is you, the church is me, the church is who, wherever we're at, and we as a people, as the church have to take responsibility for our youth. It don't matter where the building is at. It matters where you're at. And if you see it, see something going wrong with our youth, it's our responsibility as the church. The people are the church. It doesn't matter where the building is. Mm -hmm. Right. But see, my, my thing is I feel that we put too much responsibility on pastors and that the church, it's time for the church, the people to wake up because we have been a sleeping giant. And, and, and the thing is, is that the, the, the actual pastor doesn't really have any more power than you have. The, you have the same anointing, the same power, the same authority, the same Holy Spirit was given to you as it was given to Pastor so-and-so who moved his church out to the county. <laughs> 
you know and so I think we have to come out of this mentality of putting you know and I'm not saying that this is what you're doing but you know for the lack of a better word putting the blame or the responsibility on the pastors and the leaders of the church because we have to come come out of this place of, of going to church and being entertained. We have to come to a point where we're part of the church, that we realize the church is us and we participate, that we all have the commission to go therefore and preach this good news of the kingdom throughout the inhabited earth. It's not just my commission as a pastor or my commission as an evangelist. It's everybody's commission to make a difference. And that Holy Spirit will reside in whoever is willing to allow it to dwell in them. Mm -hmm. No, I think I understand that because, I mean, the word also declares that we are all able-bodied ministers, so no, I'm, I'm not negating Amen. any of that. I, Amen. I just think it was somehow, you know, thrown on the table or suggested in a way that, you know, the church should embrace our youth. And I just posed the question, how would, like I said, it appears that some of the churches are actually leaving the city where the problems are or the underbelly of the bulk of these situations are going on. Well, can I ask you a question? Do you feel that, yeah. be, do you feel that because they're leaving that they're less effective? Does the does does the does the place where the actual building is at does that really represent how effective the church is? I mean, I I think that if I'm in a community where <clears throat> there was a church where I felt that, that there was a church there, and I felt that at some point maybe the church represented a safe haven, that I do know at one point growing up. Being a child of the 70s, we had a certain reverence for even mm -hmm. the church building itself. And what I, what I mean by that is that there were certain times when you drove past it and let's say, if you were listening to secular music in your car, you turned it off or turned it down until you got, you know, from within the vicinity of the church. So I'm not saying that. You know, it, it 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 does make a make a difference in totality, but for the people that are, I guess in 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 those communities that maybe look at a church for that same payment, if the, if those churches pull out, where do those people go? Mm -hmm. Well, see, I like to answer that. One thing about the Lord, the Lord always gonna have a church, wherever there's people at, <laughs> and wherever God is at somebody's going to come to that church so it's all it's the church of every community every church is not going to leave out the city some pastors move their church out because they have to find land and they build a, a brand new church and have a brand new start because they're looking for the expansion and winning souls you know um some people does it because of um like i said for um status they uh, uh um um they could bring in certain caliber of people to bring in um, the finance to keep that church going, but most of the pastors that I know um, found ground in the county because there is nothing too much in the city. They built their church from the ground up and to expand their ministry. Every pastor ought to have some type of expansion in their mind to see their they see you ministering to hundreds and people that winning souls. Because if, if you it's a, that when you see yourself ministering to a lot of people constantly that because you so constantly your mind is on winning somebody to christ that's the burden that the pastors have you know that's one of the burdens that the pastors have the um it, it's the souls it ought to be number one is the goal is souls you know that's the number one burden the pastors have amen another call okay okay Th thank you thank you Come on. god bless go ahead call tonight oh fine how you doing good I hope you're still on I turned my TV off so that I could yeah. hear you well y yeah if we I, we can hear you we okay. on okay well you know that there are over 900 churches in the city of Richmond <laughs> I, I don't mind if a few of them leave <laughs> <laughs> the reason I don't is because every time you have a church they don't pay taxes and so all the people have to pay the taxes 
But you know, one of the problems is that maybe we don't know who the church is because I don't. Sometimes I don't like using that word because it make it makes it seem like everybody is the same. I am a member of the body of Christ. Uh huh. And there is a slight difference there because people keep thinking of the church as uh, a building, whereas we're all people. We are joint heirs with Christ. Right, mm-hmm. right. And as one person just said on there that, you know, when we're saved, you don't, you said it, I think, that you don't you just stop at the door. Yes. But what most people mm-hmm. don't realize is once you get saved, that means that you have come into uh, communication and fellowship with the Lord himself, the Lord God, Yahweh. That's his real name, it's uh-huh. Yahweh. Mm-hmm. We know that, that, mm-hmm. that you are in actuality joint heirs with Jesus Christ. And we are missing the gospel of the kingdom. We mm-hmm. get the gospel that says when Jesus died, he died for everybody to be saved. But we're forgetting the gospel of the kingdom. Right. The gospel of the kingdom says that everything that Jesus has supposed to be yours, Amen. everything that Amen. he has is supposed to be yours, Amen. including this earth Amen. and all the gold and everything Amen. else that's in it. Mm. We do right. not apply I like that. Yeah, well, I wonder if pastors <laughs> I like know it. Right, and that, but that's because the difference. Because yeah. we're supposed to be the big shots around here. That's right. You know, we're, the, right. we're, we're supposed to be his servants, but the other people are supposed We're supposed to be kings in the earth. That's mm-hmm. right. We are. That's right. Kingdom in minded. Every field, That's right. In every field, not just somebody being a pastor. That's you right. Get that and everybody wants to go follow the pastor instead of going to follow Jesus Christ. There's right. a whole big difference. Right. Mm-hmm. Amen. You That's know? Right. And so I'm saying to you that if we'll ever learn that that Lord's Prayer. When he said, as it is in heaven, so shall it be on the earth, he put us here to make it like it is in heaven. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. And we don't understand that yet. Right. And he said, when the gospel of this kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom will Mm -hmm. be preached throughout the world, then he will come. The gospel of the kingdom is not being preached most places. And it's not going to, Jesus is not coming back until it's preached throughout the whole earth. Right, mm-hmm. right, right. And so I'm just going to get off. And, yeah, because we're running out of time. Continue. But I do want to interject that that's why it's so important for the economic piece. Because the economic that we were talking about is really kingdom economics. And so understanding kingdom economics makes right. a major we're difference. We're right. Yes, yes. Everything. Everything. Yes. Mm-hmm. Amen. We're supposed to know how to handle the money. That's yes. why we're supposed we're here to be good stewards over the money that he gives us. Listen, if you live in Richmond and you believe that the city council and the mayor is doing right by the city, then you don't understand what's going <laughs> on here. You don't get it. We okay. are going down the tubes and everybody's saying we're doing fine. No. Ma- the reason that people want to be in the county is because they don't know how to make disciples of okay. Jesus Christ. All right. Ma'am, uh, can you call back next week? Please call back. And I'd like to talk to you a <laughs> more. We'll, we'll be right here next week and you we want to talk to you more. Me. Okay. You can call me. My I got name two is minutes. Shirley Harvey, and I ran for treasurer of this city because okay. I going on. Okay, let me pray this prayer out. We get ready to go off the air. God bless you, Shirley Harvey. I will be calling you. All right? God bless you. I tell you, she was awesome. Mm-hmm. This pray this prayer mm-hmm. together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank okay. you for Shirley Harvey. We thank you for all the callers they called on their concern tonight. We ask you to bless them and bless their families, bless their household, bless where they're going in and they're coming out. And then, Father, bless the pastors out there to have the churches, pastors all over, God. You put your pastors in the city of Richmond and all over the land, all over the earth. Bless pastors everywhere. God overseas. Bless them pastors. God yes, bless Lord. the pastors over here. Yes, in the name God. of Jesus. The name God of bless Jesus. them 
man, woman, boy, and girl, saved Thank in the you. name of Jesus, we pray. If you are invited to come to the Fountain of the Living Outreach Ministries, we 3800 Broad Rock Boulevard in the, in the South Side, Richmond, Virginia, where the Honorable Bishop Lawrence Levi Teller and the Honorable Co-Pastor Elder Stephanie Teller is the pastor of the church uh, ministry on fire for Jesus Christ. And if you're also invited to come to... Um, Jubilee. The Jubilee Ministries over the North Side Ministry with the Honorable Pastor Gwen Rodriguez is the pastor and the Honorable. So God bless you. Until next week, <laughs> Pastor Rodney Johnson and Brother Robert West. Peace. We'll be seeing you. God bless.